These ducklings are not just cute. In fact, they are on a mission. They didn't get there by chance and their story begins far from these fields in Vermont. Ducks like these have been key allies for rice farmers in Asia. It all started with Takao Furuno, a Japanese farmer who popularized this farming approach in the 1980s. He realized that raising ducks in rice fields was an excellent alternative to using chemicals. He called it Aigamo. The idea was simple. The ducks replaced the pesticides by eating parasites, and their droppings also help fertilize the crops, helping farmers avoid synthetic fertilizers. This farming method quickly gained popularity until it found interest in these fields in Vermont. Hi, I'm Eric Andrus, and welcome back to Boundbrook Farm. Eric Andrus started Boundbrook Farm in Vermont in 2005 to grow wheat and barley. But soon, he noticed puddles forming in the fields, which reminded Andrus of the rice farms he visited in Japan a few years back. He realized that the slow-draining soils might be better suited to rice. In 2010, he came across research done by two farmers in Vermont on the Aigamo method. That got him thinking, why not bring the Japanese technique to this corner of the world? He started by picking out cold-tolerant Hokkaido rice varieties from Japan and opted for muller ducks, which are known for their foraging skills. They are working companions and they follow me around. I train them since they were hatchlings uh, to come when I talk to them and sing to them and to not be afraid of me. These hybrid ducks, their names derived from the French word for mules, were bred in Canada. Their small body size prevents the crops from being crushed by their vigorous foraging. I grow Hokkaido varieties because Hokkaido has a very analogous climate to Vermont. The process begins in spring, when rice is first planted in paddy nurseries. While the seedlings grow, Andrus tills the fields with a specialized Japanese tractor to create optimal growing conditions. When seedlings reach about 17 centimeters, that is about 7 inches tall, and begin growing about 3 to 4 full leaves, they are transplanted to the paddies. Seven to ten days later, once the seedlings take root, the ducks are released. Electric fences are set up to prevent predators like mink and otters from eating the ducklings. the ducks get to work and helping the rice grow. The reason it works is that ducks eat all kinds of plants and animals that are found in the paddy environment, but they don't eat rice because rice leaves contain silica and ducks don't like the uh, texture of silica on their bills. So they ignore the rice and scour up everything else, helping keep the paddies weed free. When the rice matures and the ripening seed heads start to droop down, the ducks are removed from the paddies. In August, four months after planting the seeds, the water from the paddy fields is drained to get it ready for harvesting in October. The grain is processed later in the fall to produce rich, nutritious organic rice ready to be sold. Sometimes the ducks are also sold for their meat, contributing to the farm's income. But Boundbrook Farm is not just about rice and the profits. Over the years, it has become a wetland wildlife sanctuary that plays host to many kinds of animals, including flocks of migrating ducks. Andrus is trying to create a community of rice farmers who could support one another. He aims to popularize the Aigamo method in New England by training other farmers. This sustainable approach could transform underutilized wet fields 
into thriving rice paddies that benefit agriculture and wildlife. Along the way, we produce something that is of value and nourishes and sustains. So what more could you want? Oh, I like to rise when the sun she rises early in the morning.